So Kierkegaard writes that, quote, passionate preferential love is another form of self-love. This is what on the hand that I call the preference implies selfishness thesis. The works of love does not offer a very clear explanation of it. There are clues to it all over the place. Uh, and his reasons for it include um, uh, several of the other sort of subordinate theses I have on the handout. It's not just that in erotic love and friendship, we are self-loving by indulging our preferences or our appetites. The real problem, in his view, is that such devotions, at least in their pure natural form, are not based on anything higher, any objective good to which they respond for its own sake, at least in his view. Instead, quote, this preferential love actually gives itself the significance by which it swears. Um, an idea that you find in several of Kierkegaard's works. What he seems to mean here is that I love the other person for their constellation of traits because appetites that I already have select these traits as good for me. I respond to the other uh, to no values in the friend or the erotic beloved except those that are conferred by my prior inclinations, dispositions, or appetites. So I'm not really apprehending a value that transcends me, that has some kind of objective authority for me on this view. I'm rather just noticing something I'm attracted to, uh, like an iron filing being drawn to a magnet. Um, at least that's, that's Kierkegaard's view here, or his complaint about the natural loves in their unaltered form. So given that they have no firm foundation on this view, these loves lack an enduring continuance. Their motivating power can quickly disappear if my appetites alter or the beloved loses those properties that my appetites light up as good. And this is very similar to the complaint that Nugren gives about Eros in his later work, so indebted to Kierkegaard. Thus, underlying Kierkegaard's distinction between preferential and agopic loves is, quote, the difference there is between the play of feelings, drives, and passions, in short, the play of powers of immediacy in desires or in want. What a difference between this and the earnestness of eternity, the earnestness of the commandment, in other words, the appetites of our immediate nature are those passively acquired or given by our animal form, whereas neighbor love is, quote, a matter of conscience, and thus not a matter of drives and inclinations, unquote. Neighbor love, agopic love, has a different motivational structure. It aims at the well-being of the neighbor for her own sake, rather than being drawn towards the other person as part of the agent's own happiness or perfection. So, in Kierkegaard's view, we have to will to love the neighbor, that's his phrase, against the natural grain of human nature, instinctive inclination, social mores, peer pressure, and so on. Like a Kantian goodwill in this sense, agopic love is a volitional motive actively formed by the agent rather than something caused by the attractiveness of the other person, giving our own appetites or desires for happiness or completion. Agopic love then is free of, quote, natural determinants, this seems to explain several of the other theses that Kierkegaard uh, develops in works of love. For example, that agopic love is more autonomous because it's grounded on freely accepted obligation. It's not dependent on the other in the way that acquisitive desire is. It flows freely from the agent's will. And in that way, in that sense, it doesn't depend on the object of love. And on preferential loves, unlike preferential loves rather, agopic love shows an equal regard to all other persons without distinction because it's not based on their contingent or distinct features. Again, notice the similarity to Kant on the goodwill. And unmodified preferential loves are possessive by contrast in Kierkegaard's view. For example, he thinks that jealousy lurks in the heart of all friendships, especially in the desire for exclusive or distinctive regard from the other pay attention to me and not that other friend, right? It's that aspect of friendship that's worrying him. By contrast, whereas agopic love does not demand reciprocation from the other and thus does not aim at exclusive relationship with the other or God, it's in that sense completely giving. It's not demanding anything exclusive from the other person. If this is a correct interpretation of what Kierkegaard means, then his basic distinction between preferential and non-preferential loves derives primarily from the underlying distinction between the two modes of motivation uh, rather than two types of goal. And these are similar to, no to Nugren's Eros and Agape. In particular, in some passages, Kierkegaard seems to anticipate Nugren's central premise that if love is property-based or responds to contingent features of the beloved that vary between people, 
then this love has to be erosic and so formally self-interested. At least Kierkegaard seems to endorse that. I want to rescue him from that um, interpretation, but it can definitely look like that in certain passages. Mm -hmm.